Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery here in our pro shop today. I am here with Johnny Grace, sales rep from Raven Crossbows. And Johnny's going to show us something that really pretty much no one has seen before because Johnny said this crossbow is literally two days old. Exactly, exactly right. Uh, PJ, thanks. This is great. I'm really excited about this. Um, this, is a, this is my sample here and we got this uh, actually over the weekend. So really it's been out in the, in the real world for not quite 48 hours, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. Show us what you got. You got it boxed here. This is how it comes to the customer. Exactly. This is the consumer gets this bow, or you guys get in the shop. This is what you're going to see. And unlike most crossbows, because of the size of the Raven crossbow, this guy comes already assembled. Uh, you notice right off the bat that's a small little package here. Yeah, right. Uh, we're 10 and a half inches axle to axle, uncocked. And it's going to get a lot smaller than that before we get done. Wow. So again, take it out. Here's here's everything. Ten and a half inches, and this is uncocked. This is narrower than most any other crossbow out there before it gets cocked. Very very tiny, lightweight. The entire crossbow, uh, with its scope and quiver and everything installed on, is just right at seven pounds. So real easy to manipulate. Fairly short. Because the front end is small and lightweight, uh, that lets it balance nicely so you don't have a, a real forward-leaning uh, yeah. crossbow. The weight's back, back towards the shooter. So, Great-looking Predator camo. Uh, this is a decal right here. Uh, that's going to come off. The consumer can peel that off. That's just to call out the, the uh, internal, uh, the built-in drawing system uh, that's on this. We'll get to here in just a yeah. second. But Inside the main box are, are two other boxes. One of them is going to include your scope right here. And the other one will have your arrows and other accessories. Uh, arrows right here. I'm going to leave these in the box here. We've got some loose ones out to play with in a minute. But quiver right here, quiver mounting bracket, and your our cocking device. And we'll we'll play with that again here in a minute as well. Usually this is where the work starts for a lot of crossbows. But on this one, we're going to take the scope out. It, it's a variable power, and we're going to, in the sighting in process, we'll choose the right magnification that will match the spacing of the crosshairs inside. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to start at about 400 feet per second. Just for, for references, uh, the Raven R9 crossbow is rated at 390 feet per second. Um, as you know, we just shot a minute ago through the chronograph, and it, it hit 395 feet per second, and that's with a 400 grain arrow. So. And you'll notice that it is a, is kind of a normal configuration, okay, uh, bow on the front end, limbs laid back in a normal, um, call it a normal configuration, it's not reverse limb or anything like that. But what's really unique, and this is what, uh, we're going to refer to this as the helicoil system, and you, you see that called out in the advertising, yeah. are these brackets right here. There yes. are no crossing cables, so a completely unique feature of this crossbow, everything else out there, if they're tied, it, it, every compound crossbow has cables that go from one cam somehow to the other and typically it's down and underneath the track with a slide or whatever yeah. has to go down and back under which the shorter the crossbows get the more that angle uh, puts stress on the limbs right. this anchors directly to this bracket on either side there are no crossing cables uh, so now we can pull and through the entire cocking process that cam stays perfectly straight and level nice. you'll also notice that there's no rail uh, we're going to show you some arrows here in a minute. Uh, there's no rail for the arrow to ride on. Yeah. And the, re the way it's supported in the front is this arrow rest. So instead of, um, instead of a track that this thing is laying in, yeah. what we have is um, spring-loaded for cushioning, uh, an actually adjustable arrow rest, and the arrow will ride right along there and pass through like that. Yeah. And so tell, tell me about, um, you mentioned that the cam, that you actually can get that extra speed because of a unique rotation in this cam. Exactly. Instead of that cam rotating around and eventually the cable starting to overwrap itself and you have to stop, which right. typically is a 270 degree or so rotation, yeah. now we can rotate that cam almost 360 degrees. We get all the use out of it right. and we get, we get the, the, the extra speed because that post is quite small and it's driving this bigger radius out here, sure. that's where the speed comes from. It's like having your, like having your bike in a higher gear. So yeah, you got the yeah. smaller sprocket and the bigger sprocket. So it turns it really fast. And like we said, it's 390 feet per second rated, and it's been hitting that very easily. 
All right, let's get into this uh, unique cocking system that you got here. Now, everything on the R9 crossbow is ambidextrous. I'm right-handed, so I'll go to this side right here. Okay. Um, we engage inside uh, of the cocking device. There's a little rare earth magnet, and that helps draw it into the post, uh, so it helps hold it. And then there's some little undercut areas to grab the, the, the tongs. I'm going to act like I'm winding a little bit to put some tension, which is going to allow me to disengage the gears. Yep. Inside, there's a there's a, a button right here, mm -hmm. uh, easy to get to with a, with a handle. This handle can change from right to left hand if you're a left-handed individual. Disengage it. All right, now I've disengaged the gears, and I can unwind and put some slack in the system. Yeah. All right, I take this off, and then just for, for effect, you can see what's going on here. Um, I still have my thumb on the, on the button back here, so the yep. gears are disengaged. The entire trigger unit disengages from the back of the stock here, goes down, and now engages the string. Check and see. All right, it's it's snapped on there. It's nice and tight. It's important when that goes forward. There's an audible click that lets you know it's engaged the, to the string. Exactly. If you lower it down very slowly, like if you're you're if it deers around and you're uh, you want to be very very quiet, um, you can lower it down slowly. But you want to make sure that it snaps on the string. So and everything is locked up inside now. And that's because snapping onto the string does what? Well, it engages the the jaws inside. So now. The, when you snap it on the string, it's spring-loaded, it clamps, and now we've got the string. Grabbing of the string and, and drawing the string back into the trigger system, that's kind of like uh, drawing your bow and anchoring, okay? Your anchor points. You want to grab the string in the same place every time, and you want to anchor it the same place every time. So here, uh, this carriage goes down inside a track, inside a rail, and, and the string is, of course, fixed. We've grabbed that string in exactly the same point, and we'll grab it at the same point every single time. All right. All right. Now, we get our little winder back out, our, our crank here, and we'll start cranking it up. Now, you hear the, you hear the gears. I'm going to leave this engaged so that you can hear what's going on. Yep. But it's, it's simply a winch inside. There's, there's dual gears. You can see the picture up here. There's dual gears, so this is driving on both sides. Very durable. We're going to wind it back up. And you notice uh, it only takes 11 uh, rotations to fully crank the crossbow. It'll be all the way back. And just for our hunters out there so they know, this is making noise as you crank it back, but there is a way... There's a button you can push so that that cocking mechanism is silent. That's true. If, again, you had a deer out there and you were trying to wind it uh, and you were trying to be quiet about it, normally we'd cock it before we go to our tree stand or whatever. Sure. But, yeah, you, you can't hold that button down. But be cautious, just like a boat winch, you get tension on it. If you've got that button held down right. and you let go of the handle, then it could spin freely. Yeah, so you yeah. want to be sure that you, you keep good control of that. So right. a lot of built-in cocking devices have a sort of a limiting feature where as you wind it, once you get it cocked, you have to stop. Because right. if you go much further, you can overstress some component inside here. On this one, really great idea, there is a clutch built into this winder, wow. and it's going to spin freely. So we get back here, you cannot overwind this. That imagery right there, that really says a lot about what Raven is about. The most compact crossbow that certainly anybody's ever seen. What's our distance here to here now? We're only six inches axle to axle. Let's go over a little bit about the bolt that we're going to use here. Okay. It's, it's a Raven exclusive bolt. You have to shoot your bolts and that's because... Right, the, the crossbow arrows that we use here, um, it's, it's a carbon arrow, it's kind of a standard diameter, but what's really proprietary about this and what's important are the knock systems. Now you see this knock, it actually looks like a regular arrow knock. And when we put it on the string, you're going to hear it snap in place, yeah. uh, just like you click a knock on a string. Uh, a couple reasons. One, we talked about it. There's no track here, uh, and so we want to support this air on the front end, on the back end, you know, on the on the air rest here. But right. more importantly, uh, again, you'll see that if I can see up against the, the color right here, um, that knock is somewhat tapered. There is a slightly tapered receptacle, uh, receiving area, and we're going to force that air into exactly the same spot every single time. So we've locked everything down. So it'll shoot really, really well. Any crossbow, once it's cocked, obviously there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of energy stored here. And if something were to fail and that string would come forward, you you could certainly hurt your fingers. Sure. So we want to stay out of the 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 bear trap area right here or some this yeah. this bracket right here that, that anchors the cables. That also is a string stop. Sure. <clears throat> as long as we keep our hands in front of this string stop area right here, then you'll be safe. We want to hold our arrow so that we're not directly in front of the point. But we're going to hold the arrow about mid. Uh, a third of the way back. Yep. We're going to slide it underneath that track, down into. I don't know if you can see that little, that little area that I'm I'm locking into right yep. here. This little receiver here. Okay. And then you hear it snap into place. Sure. Real audible yeah. snap. Okay. That's that clearly uh, indicates to you that the arrow has been loaded in properly. 
right. It, what's going on behind here, this air, this um, uh, the anti-dry fire device that prevents this from going off if there's no air in place, um, part of that is engaged with the back end of those knocks. So once the knock slides in and over the string, the back tips of those knocks are disengaging the anti-dry fire. Nice. So until, until it's fully engaged there. And that also will prevent someone from accidentally using uh, the wrong era, trying to grab a, a, right. a normal moon knock or capture knock style era that won't disengage the anti-dry fire because it's not fit the string properly. So gotcha. the, the safety, again, ambidextrous, the safety is on both sides here, yep. uh, this little orange dot. And I'm gonna push it real hard so you hear it click. A little, yep. little snap in there. Uh -huh. It's not. It's not a whole lot there, but it just goes forward, clicks sure. up. Okay, and that's that's on fire. That's ready to go. Most crossbow triggers are. Oh gosh, they they range all across the board. Oh yeah, sure. <coughs> Even some of the custom triggers, um, because of the engaging uh, of of heavy components and the weight that the the jaws are holding, pulling. There has to be some pretty meaty engagements inside. Yeah. Unlike a unlike a, a rifle trigger that just holds a little bit of weight. Well, there's uh, there's a linkage here. And so our trigger pressure uh, is working on the, the disengagement of the sear up here, but we don't have to have a lot of extra engagement in the trigger right. uh, or extra weight on the trigger. It's about a two pound trigger and there is no travel, no over travel. It breaks like a really nice rifle trigger. Do not put your hand fingers <coughs> in the way of the string track, but you notice the string uh, in its angle is behind the shield the entire yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So uh, prevent your hand from being able to get up anywhere close to it. So back on fire, hand underneath here, okay. and I'm going to use the 20 yard. Um, sure. What target should we shoot at down there? Uh, shoot say. the top yeah. bag. The top bag. Yep. All right. Yeah. Everybody ready? We're ready. Nice. Raven crossbows, brand new. You're going to see a lot more of these, but they are new on the market. Thanks, Johnny, for coming out, and we sure appreciate you. We're really excited. Absolutely. And uh, if you have any questions, you can be sure and check us out at LancasterArchery.com.